Today at IFA, Samsung held an unpacked event where they announced three brand new devices, the Galaxy Note 3, the Galaxy Gear smartwatch, and also a 2014 variant of the Galaxy Note 10.1 tablet. Just going to go ahead and recap the event, talk about the different devices and the specs of them, also some new features that come along with these devices, and that's just about it. So let's go ahead and get into it. So first of all, I did want to talk about the Note 3, one of the main things I've been looking forward to at this event, and I want to go ahead and talk about the design real quick. In regards to, I have a Note 2 right here. Um, a difference is that uh, the screen's a little bit bigger. It's a 5.7 inch screen, but they also did not add any width to the device, so the screen essentially just got a little bit bigger, so the bezel's gonna be a little bit smaller than the Note 2. It's also just a little bit thinner, and a little bit lighter as well, so some nice improvements there with the design of it. It looks very similar to the Note 2 on the front, having the middle button down at the bottom and back and menu buttons. However, in the back, the, the uh, camera lens looks a little bit different. Now, the 5.7-inch screen is now a 1080p display. The uh, Note 2's was a 720p, so it has been pushed up the screen resolution. Uh, when it comes to processor, depending on the market you're in, an LTE variant of the device is going to have a 2.3 GHz quad-core Snapdragon 800 processor, and the 3G more international version is going to have a 1.9 GHz octa-core Exynos processor. So uh, we did find with the S4 that the processor, whether it be an octa processor or a quad core, didn't necessarily mean it was going to be better or faster. It was just whatever processor worked better with the LTE network. That's why the quad core is more so in the LTE variant, which is essentially the US version of the Note 3. Now there's going to be two storage variants, 32 gigabyte and 64 gigabyte. However, there is going to be a micro SD card slot, so glad Samsung is sticking with that. That is something that uh, I enjoy having in my devices. They've also upgraded the amount of RAM from two gigabytes, and it now has three gigabytes of RAM. So that's quite a bit for a cell phone. That's kind of crazy. Um, they've also increased the size of the battery to 3200 milliamp hours from 31 milliamp hours so only 100 milliamp hour difference however they have noted that battery life is a lot better than the previous version so i'm looking forward to it considering i still feel like the note 2 still is the phone right now that has the best battery life out of any of the phones that i've used so uh, I, i'm looking forward to using the note 3 and seeing how much better this battery life is the Note 3 has a 13 megapixel rear camera that has the ability to shoot uh, video in 4K, which is pretty crazy considering it is a cell phone. However, you're going to need uh, a screen that can output in 4K to view that content, so not exactly sure how that's going to work. My guess is 2014 you're going to start seeing more of a push towards 4K TVs, and then you're going to also see an increase in 4K content. You're going to get three color choices, black, white, and pink, so pretty standard colors there. And also on the back, you'll notice it's got a faux leather feel. From what I hear, it's pretty, uh, it feels kind of like real leather, so uh, that's kind of interesting that they went that route. I think it's kind of neat. It gives it more of a premium feel to the device. It also adds to uh, some grip as well, so I'm looking forward to seeing how the leather on the back feels. Now, in regards to software, the Note 3 is going to ship with Android 4.3, which is actually the latest operating system at the moment. KitKat 4.4 coming soon. Not exactly sure when that's going to be released, but it is nice that it will be shipped with the latest Android operating system. It's also going to have a, uh, a bevy of updated TouchWiz features with the Samsung's overlay being TouchWiz, so not exactly sure how well people are going to like them. Hopefully it feels smooth and still feels like a stock and more of a stock Android experience. I do like a lot of the features that TouchWiz does add. However, it can feel a little bit bloated at times and slow things down. So we'll see how they integrate all these features with the operating system. There's a new one called Air Command they use with the S Pen. And of course, I'll be showing pictures next to me so you'll see it. But there's uh, it's just kind of it looks a lot like Pi navigation if you have a rooted Android phone and have ran a custom ROM that has Pi navigation controls. Actually, there's another way to get them. I believe I have a video on it. I'll link to it in the description if you're interested in those Pi controls. I don't think you need to be rooted. Anyways, that's a side note, but it looks very similar to that. Uh, they have a memo option, a scrapbook, screen write, search, which I think they call S-search or something like that, and then a pen window as well. 
So five different options on that quick little circle. You can open up on any screen. So if you're in an app at the home screen, it doesn't matter. You can just open that up and quickly go to those various functions. So that's just about all the new features that they did talk about at the event. Again, I'm sure it's going to have a lot of the awesome features that the S4 has. Uh, so don't think that they're leaving those out. Uh, they just didn't add as many revolutionary features as the S4, uh, all the new features the S4 had. But anyways, in regards to a release date, it's going to be have a global release date beginning on September 25th. And then for the U.S. and Japan sometime in October. So for the LTE variant of the device, you do have to wait a little bit longer uh, in the U.S. and Japan. Unfortunately, uh, my guess is that the, the 3G variant, the OctaCore, is going to be released first in, on September 25th. So that's kind of exciting. Now the next device that Samsung unveiled was the Galaxy Gear smartwatch, which is the first of its kind from Samsung. You really haven't seen any smartwatches from Samsung that's going to pair with your phone to give you more of a seamless experience between the two. Uh, Design-wise, I do kind of like it. I'll, of course, be showing pictures next to me. You'll see that it's, uh, it looks pretty sleek. Honestly, it comes in six different colors. I'll show them all in succession next to me as well. And then on the, the strap, you will see it does have a camera as well. Now, some specs. It has a 1.63-inch Super AMOLED display. I do have a friend that has uh, a iPod Nano watch, and it is 1.6 inches, and he said it looks fine. It's not too bulky. I haven't really seen it in person, so uh, I'm going to take his word for it, and that's a very good size for the screen. Um, it is a 320 by 320 display, so a perfectly square display. Now, also the processor, it comes with a single core 800 megahertz processor. So very interesting that they, I thought they would at least go with a dual core processor. Maybe it doesn't need it. Maybe I'm wrong. And also 512 megabytes of RAM. And which again, I thought they were going to go with a dual core and one gig of RAM. I was wrong. 800 megahertz, 512 meg of RAM. And it also has four gigabytes of onboard storage for your pictures. I don't know if you can play music from it or not. It does have a speaker along with a microphone so you can answer and make calls as well so it's a more of a speaker phone call so I, he made it look like you could answer it by putting uh, the watch up to your up to your ear i don't know if you can just have it where only you can hear what the person's saying or it needs to be a speaker phone experience i'm not too positive with that but uh, kind of interesting that you can use some gestures to answer calls and talk through your watch again if you're alone or if you're having a conversation where it doesn't matter if other people hear you hopefully not in a public place I'm not a big fan of people using speakerphone in public places currently it only pairs with Samsung phones it made it seem like the Galaxy S3 S4 the Note 2 and Note 3 are the only ones and some tablets are the only ones that it does pair with at the moment you also will need to get a software update for this to work that is what they said at the event so again you do need to have a galaxy phone for this to work which makes sense apple makes a smartwatch they're going to only have it pair probably have it pair with your iphone hdc makes one you're only going to have it pair with your hdc phone that's just how companies are going to to work it I'm, again there are going to be companies that will make universal smartwatches that work over Bluetooth, however, maybe not as seamless as the ones that are integrated just for specific phones. And then, as I said, you do have that camera. It is 1.9 megapixels, so not that great quality picture you're going to picture quality you're going to get. But again, you, it, he made it sound like you can just quickly swipe down and then take a picture with it. I don't know how awkward it's going to be trying because it is on this side of your forearm. I was curious if they were going to have it be on top, so maybe you could do a Google Hangout or something on your wrist. Looks like they're going to do it on your forum so you can take pictures of things. Again, I don't know if it's going to be super awkward or how it's going to work. It looks like it's a neat way to take very quick pictures. And then you can also share them via social media all from your watch so you don't even need to pull out your, uh, your Note 2 or whatever, your Note 3 or whatever smart smartphone you do have. Also, there's another little neat feature. If you have, let's say, an email open and then you pull out your smartphone, the email will already be opened on your phone. So that's a, a kind of a neat thing they have going. I don't know how well it's going to function. These are great concepts, but if they don't function correctly, it can cause a lot of problems. The watch is also going to have its own set of dedicated apps for it, which is interesting because, as I said, it has an 800 megahertz processor and 512 meg of RAM. So I don't know 
how basic these apps are going to be. Hopefully they can run them smoothly. I really don't want to have feel a sluggish smartwatch. The one I used, I think it was a Pebble smartwatch at CES in Jan back in January, was very sluggish and slow, and I was not a big fan of it. So again, it does need to be hopefully quick. Hopefully the apps aren't too intensive so the processor and the RAM can keep up with them. You can look for the Galaxy Gear smartwatch on September 25th along with the release of the, I believe, 3G variant of the Galaxy Note 3. And then the final device that Samsung unveiled was the Galaxy Note 10.1 tablet. I don't want to get too much into it. I'm actually going to, just because this video is getting a little long, I'll actually post all the specs and some information in an article if you want to check out that tablet. I'll link to it. It does have a very nice screen. I'm looking forward to seeing that on a 10.1 inch tablet. So go ahead and click on the link in the description if you want to check out that uh, Note 10.1. Other than that though, hopefully this video has recapped that Samsung Unpacked event well enough for you. Uh, again, more information I can post a link in the description of the video. Hopefully you liked this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. You can also subscribe to me as well. I'd really appreciate that. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. All links will be in the description of the video below. And as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up.